Here is a video clip from a case of coronary artery disease with additional aortic regurgitation. 2D, M mode, color Doppler and spectral Doppler are displayed. Measurement of E-point septal separation known in short as EPSS is shown. EPSS is increased in LV dysfunction. Measurement of pressure half time in AR is also shown. Remaining discussion is on M mode echo in LV dysfunction. Discussion on M mode echocardiogram in left ventricular dysfunction. Assessment of left ventricular function is one of the very few instances when M mode echocardiography is being used currently. In the beginning of the era of echocardiography, when only M mode was available and no two dimensional imaging was available, detection of pericardial effusion was one of the important uses of it. Pericardial effusion used to be detected by the presence of anterior and posterior echo free space beyond the heart. This is an M mode cut taken from the parasternal view, guiding the position of the cursor using the parasternal long axis 2D view, which is seen in the top panel. It is immaterial whether the cursor is placed in the parasternal short axis view or long axis view, as the M mode imaging is one dimensional an ice pick view of the heart. The cut in this case is through the tip of the metal wall rather than at the caudal level which is used for measuring left ventricular dimensions and estimating the ejection fraction. Here the cut has been taken at the tip of the metal wall to demonstrate other features of left ventricular dysfunction in this case. The topmost echo band below the chest wall represents the movements and thickness of the right ventricular free wall. The horizontal axis in this case represents time. M mode was also called TM or time motion mode and later abbreviated to M mode. Downward excursion indicates the systolic contraction of the RV free wall. The echo free space below that represents the right ventricle usually near the outflow region. Terminating the echo free region of the RV is the band of echoes from the interventricular septum. Normally, the septal echo moves downwards to the left ventricular posterior wall in systole, though the motion is not totally in phase with that of the posterior wall. Here, the amplitude of contractions of the IVS is diminished and the pattern is somewhat biphasic. Below the IVS, within the left ventricular cavity, the movement pattern of two leaflets of the mitral wall are visible. C is the systolic closure point of the mitral wall. CD segment represents systole. Some systolic separation between the anterior and posterior leaflets could indicate mitral regurgitation, though this finding is not that specific. The motion of anterior mitral leaflet is M-shaped, while that of posterior mitral leaflet has a complementary W shape. In systole, both meet and form a single line without any separation in normal case. The amplitude of excursions of PML are less than that of AML, which is also a larger leaflet. When the left ventricular function is normal, the opening excursion DE reaches almost up to the IVS with very little separation between the two. The separation is called E-point septal separation or EPSS, which is less than 5 mm normally. In this case, the separation is increased due to the left ventricular dysfunction and is over 9.5 mm. E-wave occurs during the early diastolic opening of the mitral wall. The nadir of the E-wave represents the F-point. The EF slope is reduced in mitral stenosis with almost a horizontal EF in severe mitral stenosis. A-wave occurs during atrial systole and is absent in atrial fibrillation. Beyond the A-wave, a B-hump may be visible in cases with left ventricular dysfunction and an elevated left ventricular end diastolic pressure as in the current illustration. The contractions of the posterior wall are also diminished due to global left ventricular dysfunction in this case due to doxorubicin related cardiomyopathy. A mode echocardiogram is commonly used to measure left ventricular dimensions and ejection fraction. 
ejection fraction is indicative of the left ventricular systolic function. In this different case, left ventricular systolic function is grossly depressed with left ventricular ejection fraction of only 31.1%. Usually, the left ventricular cavity is also significantly dilated when there is severe left ventricular dysfunction, but here it is within the normal range. Abbreviations IVSD Interventricular Septum Diastolic LVIDD Left Ventricular Internal Diameter Diastolic LVPWD Left Ventricular Posterior Wall Diastolic IVSS Interventricular Septum Systolic LVIDS Left Ventricular Internal Diameter Systolic EDV End Diastolic Volume IVS by LVPW Septal to Posterior Wall Ratio ESV and systolic volume FS fractional shortening here the sweep speed is 75 millimeters per second the formula for fractional shortening is as follows FS equal to LVIDD minus LVIDS divided by LVIDD into 100 this will give fractional shortening as a percentage limitations of ejection fraction measurement by M mode it measures ejection fraction in only one plane and does not represent global left ventricular function. The contractions of anterior and posterior walls alone are represented in this measurement. It can give erroneous values if there is regional wall motion abnormality of these two walls. Ejection fraction may be overestimated if the basal segments are contracting well while other segments are not contracting so well. Tickold's formula which is used for echocardiography machine to calculate the ejection fraction is currently not the best one recommended for clinical use. Two dimensional and three dimensional methods are better for assessment of overall left ventricular systolic function. But very often M mode is the only mode which is used to calculate the left ventricular ejection fraction in routine echocardiography because other methods are more cumbersome. Spherical formula assumes that the left ventricular shape is spherical. Diastolic volume is taken as the cube of LVIDD and systolic volume as the cube of LVIDS. The difference will correspond to the stroke volume. When that is divided by the diastolic volume, we get the ejection fraction. Nicole's formula, on the other hand, uses a correction factor for the difference in shape of the left ventricle from a true sphere. LV volume equal to 7 divided by 2.4 plus LVID all multiplied by the cube of LVID. By this formula, diastolic and systolic volumes can be calculated using LVIDD and LVIDS respectively. Then the ejection fraction is calculated just like the case of spherical formula. It may be noted that a failing heart tends to be more globular and the spherical formula is probably more representative. Here is a reference on left ventricular function assessment by echocardiography. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share and post your valuable comment below this video. Kindly press the bell icon after that for getting all updates.